What's going on, Comic Book Nation? Welcome to another episode of Talking Shop. This is episode two now. Ooh, welcome back to the Man Cave. Today we're going to be joined by Lamorne Morris. I just have to send him an invite to get him in here. You guys know who Lamorne Morris is, and I'll give him a proper intro. Oh, there we go. Send a request. Oh, oh hold on. Bear with me. There we go. Add. It should be connecting here. Hold on one second, everybody. There he is. Hey, hey, hey. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm good, man. How about yourself? I'm good. You know, staying home. Another day at home. Good. Welcome, good. Uh, welcome to Talking Shop. I, ha I, wrote a, I wrote an awesome intro for you. I have to read it. What's that? I've got RST in the background. Too. Oh, he's got the bloodshot screensaver. I see it. <laughs> okay. All right, hold on. I got. I got to read the. I got to like WWE style. Cut a promo for you. Ready for this? Okay. All right. You may know him as Winston from New Girl, Kevin from Game Night, Wilford Wiggins from Bloodshot, or maybe even as Mo the Barber from NBA 2K20. Before you threw your controller at the TV because you couldn't drop that three at the buzzer. Joining ComicBook.com for a little talking shop. The one and only Lamar Morris. Yo, what's going on, dude? <laughs> we're at the little Brady Bunch thing that we're going to start doing. Like, oh. <laughs> the one black uh, man, character. Out of all those things, I, like all the all the, you have a pretty uh, cool resume that you're putting together, man. I feel like you're just getting started still. Uh, what what are people who recognize you if you're walking out? Back in the days where we were able to walk outside in public, uh, what would people fans when they stop you? What do they recognize you for the most? Uh, probably new girl. Yeah, say, probably new girl, and you you know, and you'd be shocked in in, in where it would happen too. Uh, I remember being in in Africa shooting Bloodshot, and and like everybody watches New Girl over there, and I had no idea because usually when you go promote the shows, they'll take you to the places where it's people would watch it the most, and everybody. I mean, you know, Winston Bishop, hey, bro, bro, come here, come here, bro, Winston Bishop, and they could quote every episode. Um, so yeah, I would probably say I'd probably say that. Although now I've been getting a lot of just online stuff, a lot of love from Bloodshot, which is which is pretty dope. Nice. No, yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously haven't been out, you know, I haven't been out. You know. Right. Yeah. It's well, it's weird. It's a weird time. I'm sure once you get out there, you go to Comic Con or something next year, since this year is canceled, but right. you're gonna get a lot of Bloodshot love. Uh, what have you been doing? What have you been uh, passing the time at home? Uh, just been trying to work out as much as I could, uh, reading a lot, reading a lot of scripts, um, writing, um, trying to play basketball as much as I can. Uh, I'm so good that it's like practice. You're talking about practice. I don't want to have to practice. Practice? Practice. Um, no, and just doing this, talking to a lot of my friends, um, you know, via mobile apps. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you want to read any of those scripts to us, we're open to, we're happy to let you know. You know, if you <laughs> you mean send them to you, then you read them? Yeah, yeah, send them to me. I'll I'll, I'll oh. share with everybody and we'll get feedback. You know, if you got the scripts for Avengers 5 or something in there, we'll just go ahead and let everybody know what's coming out. This is breaking news. I will be in the next Black Panther. So yes, I'm, let's I'm, go. I will be I'm in the here next. for it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but let's all right so we we're you know we we love bloodshot me and you talked at the junket uh a, a good bit and we did the the watch party and everything uh first of all i am curious when you're when you're an actor who's done so many things before a movie like bloodshot and then you you join the cast since it's a comic book movie i'm curious does anything change from the audition process from the the secrecy of it does any does anything feel different in that process uh a little bit i mean i Stuff, things change in the script, because, especially with my character. My character wasn't in the original comic books. Right. So I, there was not a lot of secrecy as far as, you know, as, as far as that goes, but, but there was more so, um, uh, it, it was just different because I got to create my own stuff, if that answers your question. Like, yeah. I got to, we could, we could talk about it, you know, we, I, I couldn't go out and say, what the project was so much and who was involved so much but I but as far as my character goes usually with these comic books you know they want to know who's going to be in it is this character going to be in it are you going to have um you know that character from the universe are they going to make an appearance but because this is the inception of the the film you know the, the cinematic universe you know there was not a lot of that especially with most of the characters being um being new and being right new. yeah 
So I, I'm seeing in the comments right here, people like Jordy Loves Llamas and a couple others. And this comes from myself, too, saying you're the best part of Bloodshot. Your character was the best part. <laughs> I felt like about halfway through the movie, you come in, and it's just a shot of life that just boosts the movie to another level. I oh, thought you man. were great. So, oh, thank you, man. And you'll find yeah. that a lot with, with, you know, when a movie is, is so filled with action and, and you know, there's this dramatic appeal to it and there's all this these guns and stuff going on, then a silly person shows up and to add some levity to it. There's always a liking to that character, and, and especially if it's not an annoying character. I, I um, try not to be too annoying. In it, but, uh, I thought uh, you nailed it. And I think it's funny, man. A lot of people catch that English accent, and they're shocked by it. And you said that was just kind of you having fun. Like, yeah. you used to joke with your friends or something where you yeah. put on the English accent, and then you just got to include that in the movie? Yeah. it's I, You know, as an actor, you just – actors, we think we can do everything. You know? and, we, <laughs> and we can't. Let's just be honest. But, you know, it takes a lot of training. But for me, as a mimic or I do impressions of people sometimes and, you know, you try to mock people. Even as a kid, I would mock the preacher at church and um, do impersonations of old ladies at church. And so I, I, the, the English accent is always something that I'm so fascinated by because there's so it's just like the American accent from the outside world looking in. You know, you've got your different regions. You got your southern, your southern Texas, as you your southern Alabama. You got your northern Northwest. You got your Northeast. You got your New York. You got even the Bronx, Harlem, Brooklyn. They're all they all sound different. So I was fascinated with that. So I would always just mess around and do different versions of it. And so when we got when we when we got on set, I remember it being um, or before I went to set, I remember having getting a dialect coach just to see if I was on the right path and 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 she 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 said i was and then when you get to you get to set there's a there's a another dialect coach he's teaching you how to do he's he's monitoring your british accent but he's south african but he's <laughs> and then so you're trying your best not to because the whole crew is south african so their accent is a little bit different and so you're hearing this while you're trying to say this while you're yeah, that's it. and it, um, it and then you get you, even in post production. There's you know I wanted to make sure. So in post production, I said, well, let's watch the movie, and let's go through line by line and make sure I'm at least consistent, and not uh, you know I'm not yeah, yeah. in one day and then I'm from the Bronx the next day. You know I want to make right. sure I'm hitting it hitting it right so oh i thought you i thought you did i i, I actually like i went on google before we talked and i was like i could have sworn he does not have an english accent so you were pretty <laughs> convincing because i had to like before we went into our interview i was like i need to double check this because i swear he is not english yeah so that, you convinced me for a minute there uh, oh, but, thank you. so you go on to set i mean i imagine like i know dave wilson is a, is a super nice guy and this was his first movie i know you guys had a lot of fun so when you're going on, you're bringing the accent, and this is kind of funny. And you got somebody on set who is as intense as Vin Diesel. Yeah. How, what is like? What is the mood on set? Do you guys laugh a lot? Do you guys kind of just cut straight down to business? What is it like when you're sharing set with a guy like that? It's a, it's it's weird. It's a, it's an interesting mixture between uh, um, lax, but also you're working the whole time. So Vin right. Vin likes to. He's he's a he's more of an in the moment actor, if you will, meaning he's even though he he knows the character, he's you know he's done his research and that's why he agreed to do the project. But when he's on set, he likes to embrace it as if this is his first time. So he's walking through the whole process with you. So you're working, but it's chill, meaning he's taking walks and talking about the character while you're filming, you know and he'll stop in the middle of a scene and talk through something. So he'll be doing a scene as if it's us having a conversation and randomly he'll stop and repeat himself. And How do I feel about that? Huh? I'm not sure if I feel that way right now. I gotta figure this one out, hold on, you know. And then he'll just start diving into that because what people don't know is that a lot of that, and he knows this obviously being an OG, like, if the cameras are still rolling, you'll find something in the moment that you don't want to have to stop the cameras, have people come in and adjust stuff, do this, do that. Then it's 10 minutes later and you forgot the beat that you had in your head. So he'll just say, keep the camera rolling and 
do it and, and, and talk himself into a moment or, or keep stop starting himself to get this one moment right and he's and he's and he's really good with these little moments these like things that you go oh that's a fucking superhero right there like that's you know <laughs> that's, that's, that's cool that's right. sick that's yeah. really cool man. that sounds like a hell of an experience uh another one of your movies not bloodshot uh i love bloodshot another one of your movies is one of my favorite films it's hilarious game night man oh yeah, Dude, yeah. This movie's so good uh and also i got i gotta bring it up you do the denzel so well and there's denzel <laughs> jokes written into that movie have you ever crossed paths with denzel washington has he called you out for any of these impressions uh no i met denzel when before i even knew i could do a denzel impression i met him in uh i used to host for bet back in the day so there was a show uh, I had a show called Hot Wired, which was uh, about video games and gadgets. And I would tell all these weird jokes. I would go to Comic-Con. I would go to these different conventions and do weird stuff. And then right after, I shared a set with BET's other show, 106 in Park. So after I was done with mine, my show, taping my show, I heard, oh, Denzel's coming to be on 106 in Park today. And I just kind of waited around and hovered around a little bit until, until I saw him. And... Um, so I just walked up and said, hey, man, I'm a huge fan. And he goes, thank you. Thank you very much. That means a lot. That means a lot. And I was like, cool, man. Really cool. And then he just shook my hand, took a photo with me. And he's like, you take it easy. I was like, okay, I will. I will. <laughs> and that was it. That's the only interaction I've ever had with him. Wow. But then, you know, now I would, I, you know, I, I wouldn't do an impression in front of him. <laughs> but like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I I would definitely like to work with the dude. I would like to sit down and have coffee with the dude. I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, dude, he's like the, he's he's unreal. He's one of the most yeah. talented people alive. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I was always wondering if he caught you and was like, so I, I heard I heard I heard you've been. I can't yeah. do it. I don't even want to try. <laughs> <laughs> Man, look, as a fan of Game Night, have you guys ever talked about at the end of that movie teases a sequel? It teases mm -hmm. like, oh, we might have another little plan yeah. behind this plan. Have mm -hmm. you guys ever had a conversation about doing more with that? Um, I, 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 I heard it being talked about, but I don't think it was ever too serious of a conversation. Fair. I think if you, Dang. I think if you, you know, if you talk to, you know, John Francis Daly, you know, Jonathan Goldstein, the director, Jason Bateman, you know, maybe, maybe, yep. you know, because it, it makes sense. The movie did well. The movie is, is, people love the movie. I've never heard someone say, that's a bad movie. Oh, you it's know, great. Like, it's such a good movie. It is such a good movie. It's a fun movie. The cast is great. Everyone's great in it. Um, I would love to do uh, a, a, a remake of that, a sequel to that, for sure. Ah, that'd be so fun. Yeah, just, yeah we're, we're working from home. I got a couple of roommates in my house here. We put game night on here because this is like our home office. Yeah. We, uh, we, that was one movie that we didn't get much work done because we kept yeah. turning around to actually pay attention. And look, oh, as man. you can see in my room here, I like stuff. Like working at comicbook.com, I go to Comic-Con, I get to visit some sets. I like to collect what I can. So uh, let me ask you this. Do you have anything in your house? Is there anything from like a movie set or your, your, your job where you were going to Comic-Con stuff where you kept something that you're particularly proud of that you think uh, the comicbook.com audience might think is pretty cool? Um, uh, let's see here. So I, have, uh, I, okay. I have a few things that I stole from the new girl set. I'm not sure if they would like that or, <laughs> that. um, is that what you mean? Like, do I have anything? That yeah. Takes? I mean, cause I mean, I, you know, I, I would never steal something from a set. And then I steal shit. <laughs> hey. I, if anybody knows me, I, I'm klepto. I got sticky fingers. Let's no, go. I, I love it. Um, so right here, I'm going to do a little, let's see if you can. I'll, I'll pull one of these maneuvers. So, right, a basketball hoop right there. there you you see the big one, then the small one? Yeah, for the dunk contests. Right, so the small one is for dunk contests. No, but the small one is from new, the New Girl Loft. In our mm -hmm. loft, we always had this basketball hoop. And I, even if you remember from the pilot, or from the second episode, my first episode on the show, Zoe comes in and she's trying to dribble and she's just like, defense, defense, watch out for the defense. She goes, hey, Schmidt. And she throws the ball and then it breaks the TV. Yeah. And that's why on the show, our TV is always broken. It was that hoop um, that we, <laughs> you know, and when this, 
and when it ended um and when it ended yeah it was uh, uh i took it also for you how do you just walk off with a basketball on that how does nobody see that so i it, it, it collapses a little bit it gets lower you stuck it in, under your shirt uh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I wear big a big wear i wear big oversized white tees um that's unreal I'm, I'm going to show you something before I – hold on. So this one here is something that's very – it's a little – It's a, yeah, excuse my garage because my garage is <laughs> an absolute mess. My, let me show you how crazy my garage looks right now. Look at, <laughs> oh, I don't, that's, I don't see a problem there. I don't. <laughs> so – Oh, I like this, the Jag. There you go. You say you like the what? Is that a Jag right there? Is that an F-Taste? Oh, that's a, okay. Oh, watch out. Oh, I, well, here I was. I'm, I'm, I I'm just you. saying. I'm just saying. No. Okay. I like that too, though. So this, there's this painting that was on <laughs> in our room in one of the episodes where it was like an alien war with a butthole mouth is, is what I called it, I think. <laughs> and it was Designed by J.J. Ed. Abrams. Yeah, Giancarlo. <laughs> and then this, finally, this one right here will freak people out. Hopefully not too bad. It is... There it is. Oh, yes! That's <laughs> the one! That's the one! <laughs> I have that. Uh, unreal. Here. This one right here is my most prized possession. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> it's, He's the got tomb. it's the tombstone. <laughs> Dude, don't let me in your house because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have new girl souvenirs. <laughs> <laughs> So I might Dude, uh, I might actually auction this off for charity. That's, um, that's cool. You know, and uh, try to get the cast to sign it, and then um, shave some of the actual Ferguson's hairs. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's legit. But yeah, man, that's um, those are some of the things that I've definitely taken. Well, Set. you you definitely okay. You answered that question really well. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I think. Wait, oh, since we're all connected on Facetime and everything, what are the chances? How do we? What do we have to do to get you and the new girl cast to do a little Zoom reunion that we can all we can all watch? How does? How do we orchestrate that? Um, it shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't half be hard. face. The Taika Waititi, Mark Ruffalo, half face. There we what go. you say? We're doing that Taika Waititi, Mark Ruffalo, half oh. face thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think um, the only problem person would be Jake Johnson because I'm not sure if he knows how to work technology. So like everybody else would be fine. I think I think everybody would be down to do it. Um, That'd be sweet. That'd be cool. Yeah. Million, give us a million bucks each, and then we're good, man. All right, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll get your, che your check is already in the mail, so we can probably just uh, oh, thanks, get, get started. Uh, oh, you just thanks. have to trust me on that. So, all right, man. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us on uh, on Talking Shop. You have some cool stuff coming up. I mean, you have a project with Robbie Amell, and he's a fan favorite. Can you talk about any of that before we wrap up? That Desperado sounds pretty funny. Yeah, so Desperados is um, coming on Netflix this summer. Um, it's starring Nassim Pedrad, Anna Camp, uh, Sarah Burns, Robbie Amell, uh, myself. The cast is great, directed by LP. She's amazing. Um, it's, it's Ellen Rappaport wrote it. It's a, it's a great, funny rom-com. It's, uh, it's about a girl, Nassim Pedrad, who... I'm trying to figure out how to say it without spoiling anything. She she messes a relationship up on accident because of her weird nature. So in an effort to go and fix the relationship, she gets herself into way more trouble than than she deserves. We shot it in Mexico. Um, so we're all over Mexico. We're in Mexico City. We're in Cabo. Uh, we're in different parts. As in Cornavaca, I think it's what I what it's called. It. We're all over the place. We were in like... Like the places I've never even and I never even heard of, and so uh, we got a chance to have a lot of fun out there in Mexico. So I think you and Robbie's great in the movie. I literally just watched it last night. Nice, uh, yeah. Nice. So Robbie's great in the movie. 
um, for all the fans of Robbie Emil out there. He's a dream boat. He's a dream. He's that so jawline, huh? Am I right? Oh my God, I wish I had that. That's why I put the beard on to cover it up and make it look. Yeah, good. I feel you. It's yeah. just that Amel blood. I don't know what what they were. What's in the water in the Amel family? But I know, right? <laughs> I'm <laughs> telling you, <laughs> I get adopted, bro. <laughs> uh, but yeah, great movie. And then have Woke coming out on Hulu um, around the exact same time. So Woke, um, I play a cartoon artist, a comic book artist uh, named Keith Knight. Um, he's a real guy, but this this time his world gets turned upside down by an unfortunate incident that happens, and it opens his his eyes and his mind to what's going on in society. So his comic book takes on a new life form, if you will, where, it, where quite literally, um, yeah, his comic his comics start coming to life and talking to him. Um, I have a marker that's racist. He only draws racist stuff, and I'm trying to stop him from doing it. And that marker's voice is played by Cat Williams. We've got, <laughs> um, Blake Anderson uh, from Workaholics is my is plays we are roommates together with um, uh, dope, funny comedian T Murph. We've got I Zombie star um, Rose MacGyver. Yes, we've nice. got um, Tony Hale from Veep, Sam Richardson from Veep. We've got them as as these things that keep talking to me. We've got Cedric the Entertainer. Um, it's a crazy dope cast. Eddie Griffin, Nicole Byer, I keep going on. Um, and it's based on the life of this guy, Keith Knight. Um, so if you don't know who Keith Knight is, look up Keith Knight. He's, a, he's got you know a huge following all over the world. This guy is absolutely crazy and amazing. So yeah, so woke, woke. I can't straight. wait, man. Well, awesome, dude. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to join a, a talking shop here on comicbook.com. Everybody, yes, this indeed. has been right here, Mr. Lamorne Morris, the legend himself. There we go. Uh, <laughs> and and Lamorne, any, any last words, any, any farewell you'd like to, like to give the people? Um, I love you all. Um, follow me on Instagram and all platforms, whatever. Um, and then always wipe from front to back. Like you got to do it. You have to do it. At times like this, that's key. It's times key. like this. Times like this, oh. guys. Social distance yourself. Stay your butts at home. Only go out if necessary or if it's really fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Extreme cases. All right, brother. Well, I'll talk to you soon, man. Good luck with everything. I'm looking forward to those projects. And Thank you, I'll man. see you soon. All right, Comic Book Nation. BD, Lamorne, we're out of here.